Kip, the history of human experience and knowing what reality is is, is, is an awesome story. We started by having our, our Earth with some dots in the sky and then the, maybe the Milky Way and it was a maybe a few thousand light years and then we discovered more galaxies and expansion of the universe. Uh, when you look at the grand structure of the universe, what are the critical factors at this time in our knowledge? When we look out at the universe with optical telescopes, radio telescopes, x-ray telescopes, we see a universe of stars, planets, galaxies, nebulae, uh, quasars, a fabulous universe uh, that, uh, uh, of which we see all these beautiful pictures in National Geographic uh, and elsewhere. But there is another side of the universe the side that fascinates me much more than what we see with our eyes. A side that we have not yet seen, in quotation marks, seen, that we will never see with our eyes, that we have to see in other ways, uh, but that we know is there on the basis of theory and a little bit of observation. This is what I like to call the warped side of the universe. Objects and phenomena that are made not from matter, but instead are made from warped space and warped time. What does that mean? Well, so a black hole is made from warped space and warped time. Uh, its circumference around a black hole is much smaller, far smaller than its uh, diameter. Uh, time is warped uh, near a black hole. It slows to a halt at the horizon, the edge of the black hole. It flows inward toward the center uh, inside the black hole in a direction you thought was a space direction. Space and time are warped. Space whirls around a black hole at very high speeds. Uh, this is a black hole and it's something that has no matter in it. It's just made from warped space and time. It's one example. The other really exciting example is the Big Bang, birth of the universe. A singularity analogous to the singularity of the center of a black hole where uh, space and time are infinitely warped and where matter and, uh, gets destroyed. The Big Bang singularity was a region, a thing that had infinitely strong warping of space and time. It gave birth to all of the matter of our universe that we see around us in a huge explosion. That birth of the universe was and the object that gave birth to the universe was on the warped side, made from warped space and time. Uh, there are other objects that we think are on the warped side. An exa another example is what we call a cosmic string. The uh, string theorists tell us that in all probability, the fundamental building blocks of the universe are tiny, tiny objects, far smaller than the nucleus of an atom, called strings. Uh, that, are, that are like <laughs> strings uh, that fluctuate quantum mechanically, probabilistic fluctuations, and that are then, in the, depending on how they fluctuate, they give rise to the phenomena that we call electrons or protons, yeah. fundamental particles. In the birth of the universe, at the very beginning, uh, out of this singularity came strings and objects made from strings. But there was, we believe, there's strong observational evidence at the very beginning an extremely rapid expansion of the universe that we call inflation. And string theorists such as Joe Polchinski at the University of California at Santa Barbara uh, have given arguments, fairly compelling arguments, I'm told. I'm not an ex expert yeah. in this, but uh, I'm told by my string theorist friends, fairly compelling, that some classes of strings born in the Big Bang uh, by inflation may have been inflated the cosmic size so they reach across the universe. So they're extremely thin and, and, and enormously, enormously long. long. Uh, and these things are in the following sense. They're made from warped space. If you go in and you measure the circumference around them and then you measure the diameter, <laughs> the circumference is less than uh, the diameter times pi, just a little bit less. Uh, so it's sort of like uh, the uh, warping of uh, uh, space around a cone like this, where the circumference mm. uh, is less than pi times the diameter. Right, 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 so right. That, kind, that kind of a warping. Right, right, right. And uh, these uh, the strings then are, in some sense, a crack in the fabric of space. You pluck it, and uh, waves run down it at the speed of light. 
uh, because they have enormous tension, so enormously fast waves running down it. Uh, and so they, these are ob hypothetical objects out on the warped side of the universe. And there are a number of other possibilities. And a, a fourth possibility that really should be mentioned is our whole universe itself may be uh, a, in its space, maybe a three-dimensional sheet living in a higher dimension. This three-dimensional sheet, the string theorists call a brain, brain, and the higher dimension they call the bulk. <laughs> and it may live in the higher dimensions and vibrate in the higher dimensions. Uh, uh, again, it's, it's, it's warping. So you've said it's impossible to see this with visible radi radiation and even some of our other kinds of radiation. So how can we possibly have a way to apprehend such warping? Well, you look for it using radiation made from the same stuff as these objects. Radiation made from warped space and time itself. So you imagine the surface of uh, a pond, nice and flat. You stick your finger into the pond and you stir it around and around and waves, waves. go out on the surface of the pond. Well, the same way if you have, for example, two black holes that are orbiting around each other, uh, they are each made from warped space and warped time. And as they orbit around, their motion creates in their vicinity ripples of warping that go traveling out through the universe, carrying detailed information about these black holes. In fact, one of my students, a guy named Fenton Ryan, a few years ago, proved mathematically using Einstein's laws that if you have a big black hole being orbited by a tiny black hole, as the tiny black hole spirals into the big black hole, it feels the warping of space of the big black hole, and it creates ripples, like ripples on the surface of the pond, that go out that carry a detailed map of the warped space and the warped time and the whirling space of the big black hole. So if we can detect these waves and monitor them, we, and, and are good enough at extracting their information, we can build maps of their sources, wow. like uh, astronomers map the surface of Mars, but not using light or radio waves, using these ripples uh, in the fabric of space and time, which we call gravitational waves. That's a lousy name. They yeah. shouldn't be called that. <laughs> but for historical <laughs> reasons, that's what they're called.